Hello friends, today we're going to talk about the energy involved in phase changes. On your worksheet that you have, the thermochemistry worksheet, we're going to look at what would happen if we convert 23 grams of ice into steam. Alright, so let's think about what that's going to look like. We have a graph here, it says time, really should say energy, so make that change. The graph starts at below zero. Well, if you read up in our instructions, it says negative 10. So the graph is starting out at negative 10. As we add energy, the temperature of that ice will rise to zero degrees. Okay, so we have a temperature change. We know that heat is equal to the mass of a substance times the specific heat times the temperature change. We have a temperature change from 10 to 0, so a change of 10. We can look up the specific heat of ice, in fact it's right over here, and we know the mass is 23 grams. Okay, So let's calculate the, specific, the energy it takes to heat ice from negative 10 to 0. We'll use Q equals MCAT. So the mass is 23 grams. The specific heat of ice is 2.13 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And our temperature change is 10 degrees. Okay. 23 times 2.13 times 10. 489.9. And look, it's already there calculated for you. All right. So we've just figured out the energy it took to go from this point to this point on our little graph. Okay. What's going on in the graph in the next section? Well, you'll notice that there is no temperature change. It's staying flat. It's staying constant. We're continuing to add energy. Think back to our discussion on intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces cause particles to be attracted to each other. We know water is very sticky. It has lots of hydrogen bonding. Same thing in ice. So as ice begins to melt to water, we have to work to break those hydrogen bonds, those intermolecular forces. In order to do that, we continue to add energy, but our temperature doesn't change because what is temperature? It's the speed of the particles. Well, as you're going from a solid to a liquid, during the melting phase, that water's temperature is not going to increase until all the ice is melted. So can I use Q equals MCAT here? Well, I have a mass. I can look up a specific heat. But do I have a temperature change? No. Well, everybody knows if you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. Well, we're definitely adding heat. So we're going to use a new equation, introducing a new equation this time. This equation is Q is equal to M times delta H of fusion. And I like to think just like it looks like M cat. This looks like and ma. So we're going to have Q equals ma as opposed to Q equals MCAT. All right. If we look in step two, it gives us the heat of fusion for water is 338. So we're going to take 23, I'll lose my graph here, 23 grams times 338 joules over grams, because that's the energy it takes to melt one gram of water. Our grams will cancel, and we'll have an answer in joules if I do the math with the magic calculator that never works for me. 7,774, which, oh look, it's the same number. I didn't even set this up in advance. Alright, so far we've put that much energy in. We've put 489.9 and 7,714. We've proceeded to this point in our graph. Now, once everything is completely melted, we don't have to overcome intermolecular forces anymore. Our particles just have to move faster. 
So now our particles can have a temperature change and the temperature can rise. We know the melting point of ice is zero. Freezing point of water is also zero. The boiling point is 100. And so for this one, we're going to use Q equals MCAT. It goes on in step three. Q equals our mass, 23 grams. We already know the specific heat of water is 4.18 because we've heard it so many times, we can quote it by heart. And we'll have a temperature change of 100. So we're going to go 23 times 4.18 times 100. 9,614, which happily has already been calculated. Now we are at this point on our graph. We're adding more energy, but the temperature's not changing. This is because this is when it's boiling. Now you actually have an experience with water that was boiling when we did the specific heat of a metal lab. You put a piece of metal, a block, into a beaker of water, you took the temperature, the water stayed 99 or 98.8 or whatever it stayed at 101. Usually it's a little below 90, 100 just because we're not at sea level. But the water stayed boiling at that point the entire time. Okay? That's your proof there that temperature doesn't change during a phase change, if you needed proof. So what we need to know is what is, we're going to use Q equals ma again. So we need to know what is the delta H for boiling. And if we scroll down here, we call that the heat of vaporization. And the delta H is 2287. So we're going to take 23 grams. We don't have a temperature change times 2287. 23 times 2287 gives us 52,601. All right. Our last bit now, we have a temperature change. So we're going to go back to Q equals MCAT. Our temperature change is going from 100 to 109. That's a 9 degree change. So we're going to go 23 grams. We need to know the specific heat of steam. It's 2.00. And we changed by 9 degrees. So we just do that math. 23 times 2 times 9, 414 joules. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of heat to heat up steam. All right. Now we add all the steps together, and you can see that it's been done down here. I'm not going to repeat it because you guys can read that. But we had 489.9 489 plus 7,774 plus 9,614 plus 52,601 plus 414. And when we add it all together, we get 70,892.9 joules. If we want to convert that to kilojoules, we divide by 3, so we get 70.8 kilojoules, or 70.9, really, if you wanted to round it. Okay? That's the process we're going to follow. So flip to the back now, and we're going to draw a graph each time we solve one of these. The first one, draw my graph, we have 27 grams of water. What temperature are we starting at? 10. And what temperature are we ending at? 90. So we know we have a temperature change. Are we going to have any phase changes with water between 10 and 90? No, because water free freezes or melts at 0 and it boils or condenses at 100. So this is a one-step problem. This is just Q equals MCAT. So 27 grams times, what's the specific heat of water? 4.18, did you say? Yes, you said correctly. Times 90 minus 10 is 80 degrees. Okay? 27 times 4.18 times 80 
9,028.8 joules. Okay, if we go to three sig digs, because we have three sig digs in all of our measurements, 9,030. Because this, one, two, three, that eight will round up that two. And so this is not um, significant. We don't have a decimal, so we start from, the decimal is absent, so we start from the Atlantic. We don't count this one. Ding, ding, ding. Just to remind you how to do that. All right, next we're going to look at energy to take water, heat it, and boil it all away. All right, what temperature are we starting at? 25. What temperature does water boil? 100. So we're going to heat up to 100, and then at 100 degrees, we're going to let it boil away. Will the temperature change while it boils away? No, it's a phase change. So we have two steps, a step A and a step B. Step A is just good old Q equals MCAT. We have 45 grams. We have, it's water, so it's 4.18 joules and a temperature change from 25 to 100, which is 75, for those of you that can do the math in your head. So, what do we do? 45 times 4.18 times 75. We have 14,107.5 joules of energy. 14,000 107.5 joules. Now we have to boil it all away. We still have 45 grams of it, but we're adding heat. We're breaking those bonds so it can become a gas. So we need to know the uh, ma. We're going to use m times delta h. So we need to know the delta h for a gas. It's not on this page, but it is on our first page. If we go down here, the delta h, the heat of vaporization, is 2287 joules per gram. So we're going to multiply 45 grams times 2287 joules per grams. 45 times 2287, excuse me, 102,915. 102,915. I add that to my 14,000. I get 117,022. It's asking it for it in kilojoules. To go to kilo from the basic, we have to divide by 1,000. So we move our decimal, so we have 117 kilojoules plus three sig digs, which is pretty easy. All right, our third one, we have 33.3 grams of ice. It's starting at zero. What's going to be, if it's ice at zero, what has to happen when we start to heat it? It has to melt. Do we have a temperature change then? No. So for the first part, we will have no temperature change. Once it's all melted, our temperature is going to go up, right? Where will it stop? That's right, at 100. So that'll be section B. At 100, it will begin to boil until it all boils off. That'll be section C. And then finally, we're going to heat that steam up to 150 degrees. So we're going to have four calculations. Starting with the first one, 33.3 grams times the, uh, we're going to use mat, we don't have a temperature change, so we're not going to use MCAT, we're going to use ma, Q equals ma, yeah, I like to say that, so I know, I think it's funny, you don't probably, but I don't care. So, the heat of fusion to change ice to, to water is 338. 338. joules over grams, that's going to give us for our first segment. 
33.3 times 338 gives us 11,255. 11,255 joules. Our next segment, 33.3 grams, our, we have water now, so we can use 4.18, our old friend, and we have a temperature change from 0 to 100. 33.3 times 4.18 times 100, 13,919. 918 joules. That's step B. Step C, now we have a phase change again, 33.3. We can't use MCAT because we don't have a temperature change. We're going to use MA and MA for steam changing a vaporization is 2287. 2287 joules over grams. 33.3 times 2287. 76,157. 76,000. Hmm. 76, Now we add them all together. Oh, no, we have a fourth section, don't we? Glad you caught that. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. So we have to deal with segment D. That's where we're going to have another te temperature change. We're going to be in steam. We still have 33.3 .3 grams of steam, but our new delta or our new specific heat is. I have to look because I can't ever remember. I think it's 2. It is 2.00. Ironically enough, though, another worksheet that you're going to do tomorrow has it listed as 1.85 or something. 2.00 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And what is our temperature change? It's a change of 50. So 33.3 .3 times 2 times 50, 3330. I'm going to add that to 76158 plus 13919 plus 11255. I get 1,462. One thousand four six hundred sixty-two. If we change that joules of energy, if we change that to kilojoules, it would be one hundred and five because we would round. We need three significant digits anyway, so it's going to be one hundred and five thousand joules or one hundred and five kilojoules. Okay, where are we on time? All right, we'll do one more. How many joules of heat are needed to change 50 grams of ice at from negative 15 to 120? Our starting temperature is negative 15. We're in, we have a solid at that point. As we heat it up, we'll stop at zero. That's where we'll become a uh, phase change. No temperature change until all of the ice is melted. Then our temperature will rise. It will get to 100 degrees, which is the next phase change. It will level out until everything has become a gas, and it will go up to 120. So we have five segments on our line. For A, we've got 50 grams. Specific heat of ice is 2.0. Sorry, 2.13. I was going to say 2.15, so I'd have been close. 2.13, and we have a temperature change of 15. For B, we have no temperature change, so we're going to use MA. 
we need the specific heat for uh, fusion. Fusion, we actually used up here in the problem number three. It was 338 joules over grams. For part C, we have a temperature change again, so we're back to MCAT. Our 4.18 because we're in liquid. And we have a temperature change of 100. Part D, we have another flat liner, so we're going to use MMA, but we'll use MA of vaporization. So 50 grams. Heat of vaporization, if we look up here in number two, it was 2287. Joules over grams. And then finally, steam, 50 grams of steam, gas. If we continue to heat that, its specific heat is 2.00 joules over grams. And that last temperature change was a change of 20. So, 50 times 2.13 times 15 gives us 1597.5. 50 times 338 gives us 16,900. Fifty times four point one eight times one hundred twenty thousand nine hundred fifty times twenty two eighty seven hundred fourteen three fifty. And then finally, 50 times 2 times 20, 2,000. 2000. Add them all up. Oh, it was 2000, not 2020. 2000 plus 114, 350 plus. 29,00 joules. If we change that to kilojoules, it would be 155.7, so we'll go 156 kilojoules or 156,000 joules. All right, there's another couple on here. You should have about 10 minutes left of class, I would guess. So let's see if you can get number five done. And if you have time to get to six, great. If not, we'll deal with it. Have a super de duper day, as Bar Barney would say.